welcome to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. So, till now we have covered uh, the generation of signals using MATLAB and uh, we have seen how would we analyze the Fourier spectrum of a sine wave. So, in this lecture we will look at linear convolution and uh, its four methods. So, we will first talk about linear convolution and then we will go into these four methods. So, we will only talk about discrete signals please note that. So, basically if we have two signals x n and h n then the convolution. So, this is known as x n with h n. So, the convolution x n convolved with h n is given by this expression k goes from minus infinity to infinity h k x of n minus k. So, this is important because I think we should also know that why is this important. So, convolution is important because if we have a linear time invariant system also known as LTI system that generates signal H n upon delta n that is uh, delta n is defined as then its response to n is So, if we have a linear time invariant system that generates uh, h n upon being fed a unit impulse then for any arbitrary signal x n its response will be h n convolved with x n and this is known as uh, impulse response of the set system. This is known as the impulse response of the set system. Obviously. Uh, we can go into de a detailed discussion about uh, the impulse response of a system, but uh, this is not the right course for that. A uh, course on signals and systems would be a better place to do that. We just wanted a physical interpretation of why are we interested in this and uh, the keywords here being an LTI system. So, if a system follows linearity and its response is independent of time, then response to the input is independent of time then its output can be represented as a convolution between the input and uh, the time response. So, MATLAB or uh, from a programming perspective there are four ways of implementing convolution. One direct multiplication and summation, the second Fourier transform, the third and fourth being overlap add and overlap save. So, we will look at uh, these four methods and uh, see what happens. So, we will first look at direct multiplication and summation the direct uh, convolution method. So, say x n is of length n and h n is of length k then y n equals x n length n plus k minus 1 this you would have done in your signals and systems course. So, that is there and so in order to do direct multiplication and summation. So, we have or you can also say given the two arrays given the two arrays with lengths n and k 
initialize the longer array and for each array element repeat this. So, let us try this out or let us do this in MATLAB and uh, let us look at it in PowerPoint meanwhile while MATLAB loads. So, what we will do is since these are finite length arrays we can rearrange these terms such that the mth element. So, we can rearrange the terms such that the mth element assuming that uh, so this starts at 1 not at 0 that is the correction. So, basically we have h 1 to h k and x 1 to x k. So, basically what we have is x m plus h 1 x minus 1 so on that can be reduced to l goes from 1 to k this beast. So, that said let us look at this in MATLAB and uh, so I have increased the size of the command window and let us create a new script that will help us with doing this convolution operation. So, for doing this convolution operation let me specify the script that I will be using. So, we will program convolution in MATLAB MATLAB with an example will consider a train of pulses with T and containing total of N samples. So, that said let us do this. So, let me initialize so x zeros say let me fix this to 64. I want uh, every nth element to be 1 so or every tth element to be 1. So, let me set t equals 8 and I use a clever way of indexing. I do this and so I will call it simple example lincoln. So, I am calling this file example lincoln and what this will do is if I run this. So, it generates uh, a pulse with every tth element being 1 a total of 64 samples that was as required. What I can do is I can reduce this to say 16 and I can increase the period to 16 and this returns the same. So, obviously, I need not uh, put in x and y labels every time. Now, let me define h equals minus 1 or minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3 and 0 0.2 and this and so this is h and let me initialize y. So, m equals h equals so k equals length h So, this and y equals zeros. This and we consider 
only the cases where the convolution is non zero so for this for so or for I will write it m equals this and for k equals 1 to k this y m equals y plus k x m minus k this and if I try to run this ah, my bad and I forgot the multiplication sign so I will put in the multiplication sign and run. So, array indices must be positive integers or logical values this is fine but uh, so what is the problem the problem is that uh, in some cases this might so this m minus k might become negative if uh, say m equals 1 and k equals 2 so we have to ensure that uh, this does not happen. So, if m minus k greater than 0 then do this otherwise do nothing. So, m minus k greater than 0 do this and this and, and fine. So, if I run this index exceeds the number of elements index must not exceed 64. So, we are getting the case where say so m goes from 1 to uh, capital M and capital M is 68. So, there might be indices where we might be trying to x 65, x 66 and so on. So, in order to avoid that because uh, for h 1 and the last entry we might be trying to access uh, x 65 or x 66. So, that uh, should not be there. So, we should put another condition that this happens and m minus k m minus k should be less than the length of the array. So, when we put these two cases we get no errors and let us plot stem x hold on I will plot x and y on the same plot and so, we get an error or we are getting an error because there is one step difference between x and y that should not be there. So, minus k minus 1 this oh sorry this should be plus 1 over here and this should be plus 1 and this should be plus 1 and run. So, now you get the exact overlap. So, earlier what uh, we had missed is that uh, uh, we all of that will be true when the indexing starts at 0, but uh, in MATLAB the indexing starts at 1. So, because of that we are getting this error, but uh, that can be resolved by adding that plus 1. So, since the first index is 1 we are not able to see this. So, let me make this 2 and or let me make this 1 and let me multiply the entire thing by 2 and run this again and this. So, you see that these blue plots correspond to or the blue circles correspond to the input signal and the orange ones are the output signal. So, now let us go a step further and say that I reduce the time period to 8 and I get so, this is getting a too, bit too repetitive. So, I will just reduce this to 32, 32 and so this and you get at the end of each pulse you get 3 zeros. But suppose I reduce this period. So, this is basically a replication of the impulse response which uh, justifies our or uh, which validates our assumption or which uh, says that uh, when we give it a periodic input we basically get a periodic repetition of the impulse response, but say suppose I make this 
4. So, when I make this 4, now I will get an output where the fifth impulse response is being or the last part of the impulse response is being superposed with the next impulse. So, because of that we still get a periodic signal just that or we get a quasi periodic signal that uh, looks like this. So, we can play around with this a lot, but uh, I hope this uh, clarifies the basic idea of linear convolution. So, now looking at this what we are doing is that so here if we are for this convolution operation let me take a screenshot and paste it in the slides. So, so let me paste it here what we are doing is that uh, there are basically two for loops or there are two nested for loops. So, each inner for loop is two floating point operations or this is basically each inner for loop is order of 1, but this for loop is for k goes from 1 to k. So, this is this will run k times and this is order of m and m will be so for n this is order of n right. So, the overall complexity this is order of n k or k n this. So, the second way of uh, approaching this you would have done in your signals and systems course or if you have done a course on digital signal processing you might have done this in the digital signal processing course as well using the FFT. So, this derives from the fact that convolution in the time domain is equivalent to convolution in time domain is equivalent to multiplication in the frequency domain. And what we will do now is we will take the same thing and uh, try to use the FFT method for convolution. So, keep and uh, what we will do is I will write it here. So, y k equals h k x k. So, multiplication in the frequency domain is equivalent to convolution in the time domain. So, that said let us do it. So, I will save this as another file I will just have to change the convolution operation. So, what I need to do now is in this part the convolution operation I will have to change. So, this convolution operation I will change and I will say that x equals f of t of x for m points, h equals f of t of h for m points, y equals h times x which is our element wise multiplication of h and x and y equals of y m point i f t and run uh, and this should be lower case x and run. Y and uh, one more thing I should do here is clear all and close all. So, this will and clear the command window as well and run this. So, this 
so there is something wrong with this let me check yes so this is the problem comes because we have taken this h to be a row vector so if i define this as a column vector this problem will automatically solve itself so i'll run this again and the problem is solved so there was a problem because we had defined h as a row vector if we replace h with a column vector that problem solves itself and let's say i'll make the time period 8 again and run and we get a similar output as in the case of uh, linear convolution just the only thing here or the only change here is that instead of using direct multiply and add we are using the fast fourier transform for uh, getting to the convolution operation now the question is that uh, we have done this now let's talk about the computational complexity since uh, we have talked about the computational complexity in the other case so like the earlier case let me take a screenshot and paste it in the slides then we'll talk about the computational complexity so this so basically this involves two fft operations so m and this so by 2 and this involves m floating point operation so you require an or a total of so you require a total of m log m multiplication in this but there is an issue that issue being that uh, so i'll just add in a slide here yeah. we should discuss that issue before we talk about the overlap add method so one issue with fft based so one issue with fft based approach is that need an m point dft of the filter impulse response that might take up too much memory so suppose want to filter a 2 second do signal sampled at 44 kilohertz using a filter of length 32 so 2 second audio signal sampled at 44 kilohertz using a filter of length 32 so 44 kilohertz 2 second means you have 88000 samples to play with so the signal will have 88000 samples and uh, the filter length is 32 so xk of length approximately 88000 and we need to store this in the computer's memory whereas if we talk about or if we consider the simplistic linear convolution that uh, multiply and add method then we wouldn't require 88000 samples for hn and 32 for sorry 88 for xn and 32 for hn so in that case memory requirements will be much smaller so uh, here's the trade off fft based approach will require more uh, dynamic memory or uh, will access will require you to access a greater amount of random access memory but at the same time it will be computationally more efficient and 
while the multiply and add approach is computationally less efficient or will require a larger amount of computations, you can get away using a smaller amount of memory with this. So, basically like FFT, we are paying uh, in terms of a higher dynamic memory or higher RAM for the ease in computational complexity. But uh, this will become a problem when we are uh, talking about very long signals being uh, filtered using very short uh, or uh, filters with very small impulse responses, finite impulse response filters F of course. So, the question is can we do something that uh, gives us the best of both worlds that is we require less memory and uh, we can do something computationally more efficient. The answer is obviously yes that is why we are discussing this and we have two methods one of which we will discuss in detail in this course and uh, we call it the overlap add method. So, the, in the overlap add method what we do is divide signal into shorter windows take the window and filter add filtered versions to complete the effect of linear evolution add the filtered version to complete the effect of linear convolution. So, let us define this gate function of length k as this or uh, since we have used k for the filter length let me say l. So, I will correct this here right now or I will correct this in the slides right now. So, fine. let me do it this way. So, g k g l equals unit step minus or g l n step at n equals 0 minus unit step at l. So, basically this is a gate function l and for any arbitrary x n we can define x l of L n as again k should be L and L. So, this can be a gated version of x and conversely I can write x as a summation of these gate functions and eventually I can write y as a summation of these convolutions. So, the idea is to split x into smaller windows and uh, use FFT based convolution for each window to get the best of both worlds. So, here is the code let me do this live or let me code this in MATLAB that will make it easier. So, say let me define so let us make it 1024 and this and uh, let me pad zeros. So, x m equals 0. So, this will pad the necessary zeros at the end of x. So, now for let me and define l as 32 defining l as 32 and 
sorry this is a python code not a matlab code so i'll write the live matlab code now using this python code and so for say l equals 1 to c link and the first thing i do is xl equals xl2 minus 1 times l2 l times l this and excel equals excel say mp equals l plus k minus 1 Actually, I can do this for this and H equals M. We have defined a new. YL equals H times YL equals I. And Y is so this is not, this should be this and equals this plus yl and this term yl initialized to 0 and 1. basically get the same thing just that uh, this is uh, repeated over a longer interval. So, this was the overlap add method and so I will correct, I will delete this here, I will remove this slide. So, the overlap save method is similar and uh, that I leave as a homework. Uh, so, this completes our discussion on basic signaling systems or the generation of basic signals and systems using MATLAB and uh, this completes the discussion about deterministic signals and uh, systems and matrices in uh, simulation methods for communication system. Next lecture onwards, we will start talking about random numbers, random processes, random number generation and random variables and uh, we will go into the discussion about Monte Carlo methods. We will start off with a quick review of probability theory. Thank you.